Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. Uh, if you watched last episode, we uh, ended up making this uh, station here for my for my train. Um, I did look into this train issue, and let me get into hover and take build mode off here. Um, I don't know what's going on. It was either the last update, the last hotfix, something something changed with the way the airblades are working now. For some reason, it doesn't not only not only does it not like having the the extra articulations, because I don't know if you can actually see it here. Let's see, get down and get to the center of mass. So you can see the center of mass. Where there's one there, but there's one there as well. And I think what's going on is it the game's getting confused because it's got more than more center of mass than it does actual propulsion. So it's got areas, some dead areas. That and issues with the stacked air blades. I have taken the cars off and I've tried lowering this just with the air blades themselves with no luck. I've tried with the cars with the cars and only one row of air blades and it still wouldn't come down. But if I disconnect the cars and only have one row of air blades I can bring it down no problem with or without the loader. I even tried with the containers and yeah, uh, I was able to actually sort of drop the train like just by cutting the power off the top of the platform. It is long enough, just barely. Uh, I was recording, oh, I wasn't recording, I was around on a little earlier, it might actually start raining here soon, so we might, be, we might be able to test it out. But there's always been an issue where the rain comes through ceiling tiles. For instance, like in here, I just got the, I need more stamina. Uh, if, if it's raining and you're in here, it'll come through one floor and then it'll stop raining below this. But what I've noticed is the ramps, they don't let rain through. So it might be worthwhile to make roofs, uh, roofs out of those. But I have an idea I want to work on today that I have been thinking about for a very, very long time in this game. And uh, I knew there was two different types of it. Uh, there's a standard type, and then there's a more advanced type that has a better shot. And we're going to build a trebuchet. We're not going to build a standard trebuchet where it's just got one pivot point. And then you just have a counterweight on the bottom that just levers up the... Uh, the load and launches it. It's going to be a floating arm trebuchet. And uh, I'll see if I remember to throw up a picture here. Okay. So as you see from the soft in the picture, it's going to have the counterweight is actually inside the pillars. And then the beam is actually floating and it sits on a roller. So as the carriage comes down, it not only extends the boom, but as it goes up, it shortens it so it almost like whips it so it should give like twice the propulsion uh, I do plan on making this drivable and don't really have much flat area around here I was gonna I was thinking about building a modular base system but we'll have to look at that in another episode and get a little more time a little more resources because yeah it was taking a lot uh, before I do that uh, one little side note about the my little inventory system here uh, I was having lag and I was a little concerned about things not being where I want them to be when I push, uh, I'll say push the buttons even though I'm turning on the switches. Uh, I hope I actually renamed everything before I, in this save file because I've been in this save file a couple of times. But if I do that and I open this up, and this should be the Mark II Composites. Mark one, please. Nope. Something's not right here. If I open up that one, that should be reinforced frames. I was noticing that the, the button that I was pushing, or switch I was turning on, was always the first large container that was showing up. Now, why is there three here all of a sudden? It was two before. So that's that one. We can go here, and this will be the, the plating. That'll be the first large container. I was actually, actually had named them, and it was showing up in the order. So there we go. Oh, it's showing Mark 1 plate. Okay, something's going on here. Uh, do I have anything buggered? Ah, that's why. That's why I was reading the, the plating first. So we'll go in here, it'll be the Mark 2 plating. There we go. So we can turn that off, and that should be the composites. The Mark 2 composite. It should be, there was actually a frame in there, but you can go down and see the printer and then 
this would be the SC electronic parts. And that just shows it up at the first of the list, the first large container. And I was actually renaming them, and I was actually keeping them in order, so it's somewhat organized. Uh, I've also been thinking about possible, um, like, off-site building setup where we have containers like this, which are hooked up directly to printers that are just running constantly, filling up the container when we want to go and do a big build. We've got 12,000 parts here we can take with us. And just get a better freighter than, than this thing, because I might have to go with uh, the original Freightliner idea for this. Uh, we'll see what happens in the next couple of couple of days here we're just getting back from Easter uh, I do have to sleep so I'm gonna sleep get make sure I have everything ready and then we'll start building oh, hang on it just started raining I knew it was gonna start raining soon so this is what I'm gonna show you here I'm gonna go into the food and drink room here so it should be raining inside we'll let it pick up this was an actual downpour but you can hope it's coming up in the video but you can actually see the rain coming through the ceiling uh, you don't get it in here because we're more than one story up and I think I showed this before but we'll quickly do this because this was quite the rainstorm if I remember you go up here and it doesn't rain until you go above this container and then it's raining you go down here and it stops and now for the ramps and this might be the same for the stairs too I haven't actually tested this yet this is a new discovery. Uh, one of the things I want to do too when I get this train on its proper platform is I want to start making uh, testing pads back there. But go in here and it doesn't rain. Oh, maybe it does. Not as much, that's for sure. Anyway, I'll be right back. Well, that's the first time I almost killed myself just building. Alright, don't stand underneath the blocks, you get a place.
Okay, so I have it all finished. Well, for the most part. I thought I'd bring you back for the propulsion just in time for the morning showers. Uh, I was thinking of making this thing a little bit longer, but I think this is going to be just enough. Uh, I'll give you a little explanation what what's going on here before we try to lift this weight. Uh, so what's going on is we have a counterweight here. In particular, we have about 40 tons of counterweight here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to gonna try starting with the small air blades first because I want to try to keep this small as possible even though it's pretty big and basically the air blades I'm just gonna be having them with uh, just having them with stabilization on and hover mode up I'm using the hover mode to lift the weight up I'm gonna lift it up to the very top as it I do that this arm is gonna basically go down this way uh, what happens is when this travels up and down the track this sec distance between the roller and the hinge uh, get shorter so as it drops it takes the weight and it pushes it out as it lifts up and then as it comes back up it sort of gives it uh, not only horizontal but vertical velocity so it basically doubles the speed of it in theory anyways uh, the reason why I haven't done this before is we had a lot of issues with block clipping but now that you can actually park vehicles on foundations and not worry about clipping or anything like that been an interesting uh, thing to test now. Um, if this does work, we will definitely be revisiting the pool table or the pinball table. That's uh, definitely what I've wanted to do for a while. But let me go ahead and get uh, some small air blades on. Actually, I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm gonna get these rails on first, and then I'm gonna do a save, and I'll bring it back when I have it outfitted. Okay. Uh, I know this is gonna be pointless, but we're gonna try with eight. For starters, I know it's not going to do anything. Uh, what I've done is, since that weighs 500, these two weigh 250 each. I decided I'm going to split it up. So we'll do that, and then we'll do that, and they are spinning. So, in, to lift it up, I got to get into this cockpit here, and of course, it's not going to do anything because I left it planted. So I'm going to actually spin those down. Uh, it kind of makes me wonder now what's going to happen if this is actually going to work or not because of the extra center of mass there. So now, can I get in here without destroying anything? There we go. So, let's try this again. Hop in. And see if we can lift it up. At all. And no. So, then time to reload and beef it up. Alright, we're up to 24 now. Let's see what happens here. I'm gonna get this magical block out. Uh, I might go up to 40 if it really comes down to it. Uh, of course, it's probably gonna end up going to the large air blades, which I'd rather not do unless I absolutely need to because resources are scarce at the moment. And until we get my train working again, it's gonna be a pain in the ass trying to get everything again. Oh, I didn't realize you were dropping down like that. I might have to put some stops underneath it. That is fine. That is fine because... Because it's not going to lift up anyways. doesn't matter. Once it hits that, it'll bounce back. And I'm pretty sure it's not clipping to it. Alright, let me try some more. And now we're up to 40. Uh, at this point, uh, if this doesn't work, obviously we're going to be going with the... The large blades. Nope. I gotta unplant it. I put a small slope here too. Uh, right in there, just as a little something for it to rest on. I gotta get this tool out. Alright, it's definitely floating. Good. Now it's gonna lift. Oh, look at that, it's almost there. I think I need to put a couple of air blades right there. And let's see what I can do. Well, started lifting. I'm doing something right. Uh, I can always stack another two on top. 
But this proves that stacking does work. So we lift it up. I'm definitely going to have to get some more lift on this side. But basically what I plan on doing is once we get it up to here, I'll load it, and then I cut the power. And it just drops like a rock. Let's actually see if we can do a test fire here. I am for sure going to have to... I might have to get some more counterweight in the back, but I'm thinking about adding another set of wheels or two in the front. I should have saved this too. It's okay, I got that. Save at the 24. So let's get out of first person here and uh, see if we can launch this thing. You ever had one of those feelings of deja vu? Or deja vu, sorry. Alright, let's see what happens here. That's pretty much what I'm looking for. Okay, let me uh, do a save here and we'll do a test fire. Okay, fire uh, save complete. Now, I'm pretty sure all I have to do is just turn this back on. It should go back up. Hee hee hee. It hasn't broken yet. But I haven't reloaded it. So then all I have to really do is just build and drop my ball into the little box pocket here. I was thinking about trying to get like a uh, an auto load system using a reconnect feature of the switches, but uh, it's big enough as it is. So let's go to seven. Uh, is that the right spot? Yes, good enough. And I think we'll put a beacon on this one too, like a solar beacon. That's in the wrong spot. Not that it matters. Uh, we'll put that there. Go down here and let's make a nice... You know, I think I'm going to do a black and yellow. That's what I was originally thinking of, but maybe we'll go with red just so we can see it a little bit better. There you know, something's up at BC. He's playing with balls again. Let's just hope they're his balls. Oops, missed on that one. All right, and now we should just do like so. Let's um, hmm, yeah, let's make it red. And it looks like we're gonna have to wait till the morning. I have thought of a, been thinking of like a, a ball loading system. Uh, you know what? I'll be right back. Alright. Uh, morning has come. And while I was sleeping, I was starting to wonder, is this thing going to still be okay while, while I'm asleep? I'm still locked and loaded. Alright. Uh, I do have to pay attention to that because the fuel is only going to last so long. Three and a half hours. That's fine. So let's... Get our ball in there. Get this out of the way. I might set up a stage area on the back end of this thing if this thing actually works. Alright, and let's fill it in just because. Make it a little more aerodynamic. And it's not going to let me. Of course. Oh, there we go. We can move it. Okay. I gotta take a screenshot of this. Hang on. Let's get it from the other side. Let's get rid of that. Oh, yeah. What I should have done. If I was smart, as I would have moved the switch up a little somewhere where I'd be able to actually see it. All right, let's go up and pathetic, absolutely pathetic. And I know why too, because it's leaning forward like this. You might have to put a second set of rollers on the front. What that is that? Now let's see if this thing will actually stand under its own weight. Warning, 
game may break at any time. Definitely front heavy. I got the suspension cranked right up. Look at that. It's doing a nose stand. Let's see what happens when we turn it on. Yeah, definitely have to get some more support in the front. Definitely got to admit that suspension's pretty good. Are we touching the ground? No, we're not. We are touching the platform. That's why it's not going up any higher. Nope. The wheels are in the way. That's why. Oh. That was an autosave. Thank God that wasn't a game break. But let's see what happens when I turn this off. That suspension holds up. Still got that. That massive sway. Hmm. I think that's what's going on with this. It's because it's too front heavy and it's sort of... It's not dropping down straight enough. It's creating some sort of resistance from the wheels. But uh, I do have it saved, so we might actually revamp it a little bit. Right, there we have it. That is my first attempt at a trebuchet, a floating arm trebuchet. And it did work. Uh, doesn't look too bad with the small air blades. At least they're not sticking out to here like the large air blades would. That's one of the reasons why I don't use them is because they're big. But big blades require big projects. And believe me, I've got a few of them planned. But anyways, I'm going to call this episode here. I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like. And I'll see you next time. Later.